Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, that time men, not women, wore high heels. The first high heel wearers are believed to have been Persian horseback warriors sometime around the 9th century. The extended heel was reportedly developed specifically for riding to keep the rider's foot from slipping out of the stirrups. It also helped to hold the rider steady while standing up in the stirrups and shooting arrows. A group of Persian diplomats visited Europe in 1599 to recruit allies to help Persia defeat the Ottoman Empire. A craze for Persian culture developed as a result, and Persian style high heeled shoes were adopted enthusiastically by West. Western European aristocrats. The shoes became a status symbol and the heels were extended to make the men look even taller. This practice is thought by many etymologists to be where the term well-heeled, meaning wealthy, originally came from. Just as the 1980s had notorious shoe collector Imelda Marcos, the 1600s had rabid shoe collector and trendsetter Louis XIV of France. While he was a powerful leader, his height, well, it left something to be desired, being 5 feet 4 inches tall, that's 1.62 meters, which was slightly below average for his day. The average height for men in France at the time in modern international units was 5 foot 5 inches, or 1.65 meters. A king being slightly shorter than average wasn't ideal for his ego, so Louis took measures to make himself look taller, sporting 4-inch heels, often decorated with elaborate battle scenes. Eventually, he switched to having red heels on all of his shoes and decreed that only the upper echelons of society could have matching red heels. It became a simple matter of looking at the color of a man's heels to see if he was in the king's inner circle. Not to be outdone, women of the 1600s started wearing heels as a way of showing their equality. Elizabeth Semelhack, curator of the Batter Shoe Museum in Toronto and author of Heights of Fashion, A History of the Elevated Shoe, says the rage of that period in parts of Europe was for women to dress and act like men. You had women cutting their hair, adding epaulets to their outfits, they would smoke pipes, they would wear hats that were very masculine, and this is why women adopted the heel. It was an effort to masculinize their outfits. That said, at the time, men's outfits by today's standards were extremely effeminate, a la King Louis XIV's famous photo where he's sporting long hair and wearing something that is essentially an ornate dress. He's even wearing it with tights and high heels. As usually happens, high fashion is adapted into more affordable versions and filters down to the less fortunate. And thus, the lower classes, they started to wear high heels. The elite responded by making their heels increasingly higher to maintain the distinction of being upper class. The higher the heel, the more expensive the shoe typically was. They also began to differentiate heels into two kinds, fat heels for men and skinny for women. Eventually, men got away from the heel almost completely to distinguish themselves from women. Since the late 18th century, men's shoes have had primarily low heels except for cowboy boots and some shoes worn by rock stars who occasionally have a propensity to wear effeminate garb, similar to before the Great Male Renunciation, when men switched from wearing jewelry and elaborate outfits with highly decorated cloth to drab, darker-colored, simple clothing. Basically, when Western men on the whole stopped trying to beautify themselves, starting at the tail end of the 18th century. For a time, women also drifted away from the heel as it wasn't practical, particularly on old, muddy or cobblestone-style streets where heels were nearly impossible to walk in. They were not gone long, though, the heel coming back into fashion in the mid-19th century with the advent of photography. And well, why would this be? Well, as often happens when new technologies are introduced, pornographers are always the first to take advantage, and they were among the first to embrace photography. This pertains to high heels in that they often dressed models for risque postcards and other photographs in nothing but high heels. Since then, high heels have come in and out of fashion repeatedly, except for in the porn trade, where they've been a constant staple. Lower heels were preferred during the late 60s and early 70s. In the 1980s and 90s, high heels made a popular comeback. Various styles of heels have taken their turn on the runways as well, such as the block heel of the 70s, the mule, and the famous stiletto that's been popular in the 50s the 80s and today. And now for a bonus fact. King Louis XIV may have dressed fabulously, but one Russian ambassador once stated his majesty Louis XIV stunk like a wild animal. You see, while the idea that Europeans rarely bathed at this time has been wildly exaggerated, it would appear Louis was one of those who tended to abstain from bathing. Louis himself also said that he found the act of bathing disturbing. Interestingly, Queen Isabel I of Spain once claimed she only bathed twice in her whole life when she was born. And when she was married. 
So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Also check out the book that we mentioned in this episode, Heights of Fashion, A History of the Elevated Shoe. You will find a link to that in the description below. Also, I'd like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in helping us out and getting some great perks in return, such as things like these great graphics that we make, if I might say so myself, please do consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out. Loads of great perks lined up for the people who do help us out, and thank you very much for watching.